Well, good morning. Welcome once again to Word for the Week, our online uh, book study series here at Cornerstone Faith Community Church. My name is Pastor Jeremy Heikem, and I'm very happy to be with you this morning as we take a look at um, Chapter 2 of Max Licato's book, uh, Tra uh, Traveling Light. This week, <clears throat> uh, Licato has titled uh, Chapter 2, uh, the middle sea of life. Uh, we don't understand the, t uh, the purpose of that title until we get to, uh, of course, the end of this chapter. Um, but essentially, uh, Lucato's starting with um, taking a look at the very first couple of words of Psalm 23. Of course, uh, starting out with the Lord is my shepherd, and uh, Lucado is really going to focus deeply in on simply the Lord. Who is this one who is the Lord who has um, promised us or, or done for us or accomplished all of the other things that Psalm 23 is going to talk about? Who is it that leads us beside still waters, restores our soul, brings us to green pastures, um, uh, you know, all of these uh, prepares a table before us. Who is the one? Who is the Lord who does all of these things? <clears throat> um, I liked how uh, Lucado started out um, with this particular paragraph on page 11 of the book, uh, the third paragraph. David is concerned that you and I don't make the same mistake with God. What mistake was that? Well, um, setting him on a shelf, putting him in a box, putting him in um, some kind of confinement uh, that isn't appropriate for God. He is more than that. And so he says, David is concerned that you and I don't make the same mistake with God. His pen has scarcely touched papyrus, and he is urging us to avoid gods of our own making. With his very first words in this psalm, David sets out to deliver us from the burden of of a lesser deity. And so uh, Lucado is going to use many examples throughout this particular chapter of how we um, kind of boil God down to a place of becoming less than he really is. Or, or maybe we just um, frankly <clears throat> um, misunderstand him or, or, or mistreat him or, mis uh, or, or we have a lack of appreciation for him. And, and so, kind of like we've said about our Bibles before, um, sometimes when we have a lack of appreciation for God's Word, or we misunderstand God's Word, or we uh, misappreciate God's Word, um, we, we take the Word of God, we close it up, and we, we put it on our bookshelf, and, well, that's where it stays. Um, we're not actively reading it, we're not actively engaging with it, because, well, we've found it for whatever reason, to be, uh, I guess, useless, um, or at least not worthy of our time. So what happens when we make God less than he really is? Well, Lucado is going to offer uh, sort of three um, examples of the ways that people um, misunderstand God or, or consider him as less than he really is. The first is through what he calls a genie in the bottle. Um, and he says, basically, all you do is rub the bottle and poof, God makes whatever you need yours. And so we have instances of this where we um, are in the middle of something uh, desperate and we, we just need something now. And so we sort of just start going to God and asking, 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 asking until hopefully he gives us what we're asking for. Um, a second example of uh, sort of making God less is through the sweet grandfather. And so in this particular instance, um, I really liked how Lucado kind of wrapped up his summary of this. He says, grandpas are great when they're awake, but they tend to doze off when you need them. And so some people would suggest that's how God works. It's like, yeah, it's great when, you know, he's actually doing something. But, you know, the moments I really need him, is he really truly there for me? Or is he sleeping somewhere? And then the third example, of course, is a busy father. Um, the one who's off, you know, working all the time, traveling for work, never home. Um, but 
that 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 busy father is still going to come home once a week. And so when he comes home, you had better be cleaned up, ship shape, ready to rock and roll. And so that's how we sometimes treat God. You know, God is there on Sunday morning when we're sitting in the pew. But when Monday comes, he's gone away and I can go back to being who I was and living how I want to live until I clean myself up for Sunday morning again. <clears throat> so Lucato suggests oftentimes folks want to kind of create God into this thing that, you know, he, he looks good. He looks like he's spiritual. He, he looks like he's really something, but they don't really believe that. They, it's just kind of an, an act or a look. And that's just boiling God down to a level of, of so much less than he really truly is. Now, I have to admit, I love on chapter 13, or I'm sorry, on page 13 of chapter 2. And uh, as I was uh, preparing for our message yesterday here at Cornerstone Faith Community Church, if you haven't had a chance to see that, I encourage you to go to our Facebook page um, or to our YouTube page and take a look at the message. Um, we're starting a new series talking about the names of God. And yesterday we talked about Jehovah Elohim. Um, who is God? Yehovah Elohim, meaning the Lord our God. And on page 13, Lucado uh, bounces off that same idea. He's using the name Yahweh for God. If we're going to not boil the God down to something less than he really is, then we got to know something about who he really truly is. And when, when do we really learn the most about him? When we consider his names. And so, you know, Lucado brings up Yahweh, Yahweh being a variant of the name Jehovah. Um, and, uh, you know, there have been sometimes where people have talked about the uh, Tetragrammon, which um, is the, the, the letters Y-H-W-H, -H, um, the four sort of letters that uh, sort of historically in Hebrew spell out Yahweh. Um, it's interesting that he marks here on page 13 that David could have used names like El Shaddai, El Elyon, El Olam, uh, El Shaddai meaning God Almighty, El Elyon meaning God Most High, El Olam, God the Everlasting, but he chooses to use here Yahweh, Yahweh, Jehovah, the Lord. He is the Lord. Um, look at the uh, fourth paragraph on page 13 with me. Uh, Lucado says, why Yahweh? Because Yahweh is God's name. You can call me a preacher or a writer or a half-baked golfer. Those are accurate descriptions, but these aren't my names. I might call you dad, mom, doctor, student. And those terms may describe you, but they aren't your name. If you want to call me by my name, and Max Lucado's writing this, call me Max. If I want to call you by your name, I say it. So if I want to call God by his name, I say Yahweh, Jehovah, the Lord. It's amazing to me how the Lord brings things together for us. And we spent so much time yesterday talking about how he is the Lord, our God. And what that, is, that means for us is that we have the opportunity to receive him. Well, it also means we have the opportunity to receive all that he intends to do for us. And, and it is such a shame when we, when we kind of take God as this unexplicable, undefinable, unimaginably huge thing, um, person who, who does so much more than we could ever imagine and, and boil him down to something that we could put on our shelf uh, or something like a, a, a busy father who only comes around once a week or, or uh, so on and so forth. It's, it's just... Um, it's incredible when we think about how we really do boil God down or pare him down to something that is less than what he really is. Well, how does that apply to our lives? I want to offer you this thought today. And if you have your uh, suitcase documents um, with you this morning, um, I know that I... Uh, mentioned I would send them with this video and then I forgot I sent them out. I'm going to attach them. I'm sorry. I said I would send them with the video last week. I forgot. I attached them later. I'm going to attach them to this video also just so that you have them. But if you have those suitcase documents 
And if you take your time to 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 write down some of the um, the weights that you're carrying around, the things that are, are are heavy burdens that you could you should give up to the Lord and allow Him to handle. Okay, if you've got that suitcase document with you, I want you to pull it out and I want you to to write down this phrase somewhere on that document. And I'll say it a few times so that you can write it down. We carry an unnecessary weight when we confine God to being lesser than he truly is. We carry an unnecessary weight when we confine God to being less than he truly is. I'll say it one more time. We carry an unnecessary weight when we confine God to being less than he truly is. As you're thinking about those weights that we carry around, whatever those things might be that are that you just haven't been willing to give over to God, you haven't been willing to let up control, give God control of those things, let him handle it for you. Consider how uh, maybe you've you've taken away that authority from God. You've 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 sort of pared God down to being less than he really truly is. And so the reason you don't want to give it over to him is because you're you're quite frankly not sure. You're questioning, you're wondering, is he really truly able here? And so how do we um, carry this weight? How do we have this um, confining of God to the point where he is less than he really truly is? Well, I think we wonder, first and foremost, wonder. We wonder if God is truly able. Secondly, we question if God is truly powerful. And thirdly, we doubt that God really truly would do something even if he could do something. Now, you might say, oh, I've never felt that way. Well, I think sometimes we do. I think we get into moments in our lives where things are so difficult, things are so uncertain, things are so frustrating that we, we, we maybe even without recognizing, begin to do these three things. And so I'd like you to write these three words down on that suitcase document someplace also. These three words, we wonder, we wonder if God is truly able. The second word is we question, question. We question if God is truly powerful. And thirdly, we doubt. We doubt that God really would if he actually could. So, so how do we sort of confine God into being less than what he really truly is for us? We wonder, we question, and we doubt about him. So what ought we do instead of that? Write these two words down someplace on your sheet also. Instead of wondering, questioning, and doubting God, we ought to first accept him, receive him. Jehovah Elohim, the Lord our God. Receive him as your God, your God. Receive him as capable powerful, with all authority in all things. So, so the first thing we want to do is accept. Instead of question and wonder and doubt, we should accept. And then secondly, we should expect. Expect that he has generosity, grace, mercy, love, power, and authority for you. How does Yehovah Elohim, Jehovah Elohim, how does Yahweh become truly the Lord our God when we accept him fully for ourselves as fully powerful, fully authoritative in everything we do, and when we expect him to work for us, to be generous toward us, to be loving, kind, caring, compassionate, that instead of confining God, um, just expands or blooms God into all that he really could possibly be for us.
And that begins to help us offload some of this weight. Don't carry around that unnecessary weight of confining God to less than he is. Instead, take off that weight and open up and find really truly how much he is, how, how much he intends to be for you. I hope you have a great week this week. I look forward to meeting together with you again, and uh, we'll look at chapter 3 of Traveling Light next week. Have a great week.